Hi, Ken Rolla, FreshAndAlive.com, here again with, um, this time an interview. Instead of answering questions, we've got an interview with the lovely Susan Davis from New Human Resolution? NewHumanResolution.com. Okay. NewHumanResolution.com. Susan's a friend of mine here in the Daytona Beach, Florida area, and she's an amazing person. I've always been impressed with her and the work that she does, and I'm going to let her tell you about what she does. Um, but first, um, a few little shameless plugs. Your website is newhumanresolution.com. Okay, and you're on Facebook. I am on Facebook with the same name, New Human Resolution. Okay, and um, there's probably a million Susan Davises on Facebook, but uh, Daytona Beach. Yeah, and she's she's friended. She's my friend on Facebook, so you can kind of go through there if you can't find her. Um, and let's see, do you have a YouTube channel? I do. I believe it's under New Human Resolution. Okay. And uh, I think you're also on Norm Sheely's website. Is that correct? I'm listed as a spiritual counselor under Norm Sheely website. Okay. Norm Sheely. Okay. All right. Um, very good. And just in case you want to find uh, Susan, and we will also have links to her website and all on, the, uh, on my blog. So anyway, um, one of the things that I have been teaching for many, many years is about emotional healing and reprogramming limiting and self-defeating unconscious beliefs uh, because if you don't do that kind of stuff on your path to health you're not going to get very far and so Susan does a lot of amazing things uh, in that area and others as well which she's going to talk about and so tell me about it Susan um, what exactly do you do and how do you do it I do something called the resolution experience based on past life regression it's a technique that goes in and uncovers the unconscious programming or messaging and bringing it to the conscious level to be released. Mm -hmm. And how exactly does, does somebody do that? What is the process? Well, we access the unconscious mind, which we can do in a few seconds because it's available. It's just that it's unconscious and somewhat difficult to do by yourself. So how do you do that? Like, how does somebody actually do that? How, what's the process? Well, when you work with me, I'll do an intake and get some more information as to any other time that you've been unconscious besides being in the womb or having surgeries. We investigate those uh, avenues as well so I know where to take you during the session. You're fully cognitive in the session because you're accessing the unconscious and bringing it to the cognitive level. Okay, so it's not like hypnosis. It is actually dehypnosis. Uh -huh. You've already been hypnotized. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking about trauma-based mind control for decades. And I, I'll tell you, everybody, including myself, we're all living in a fantasy that's been manufactured for us. So deprogramming, I'm, I'm really big on that. So, um, so, okay, so you send people through this process. You basically deprogram them, correct? Actually, you do all the work. Okay. And you basically guide them, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and so how long does this take? Like, does it take a bunch of sessions? Does it take a, like a four hour marathon? <laughs> <laughs> I have found that for an adult, we want to commit to at least five to 10 sessions and we won't know until we at least have five and then we reassess for children. It takes a lot less time. They don't have such a layered up effect. So one or two sessions, maybe three sessions for children. Mm -hmm. And have you, uh, what kinds of things do you see with kids? I mean, Kinds of things that need to be created. Last year, uh, well, I work a lot with kids who are working with finals and not being able to test well, uh, universities, uh, bar exams, all those kinds of things that bring panic or anxiety. So we work a lot with that a avenue. Uh, last year, I had a daughter of a, one of the CEOs of one of the hospitals nearby. I worked with most of his family. And when they found that I, she had such a good result, we worked on anger that they called me and asked me if I would work with her on her mathematics, that she was failing algebra. And now, I want to let you know that they did let me know that they were Christians and did not believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, because where did you get those blue eyes? Right. It's ancestral. It's in your DNA. So in the session, she's asked me all of a sudden, what, is there mathematics and nuclear energy? I said, yes, there is. What do you see? And she had like a movie trailer, and that's what happens in the session. You get these photographs or movies, and they tell your story. And she saw a woman who she couldn't understand. And I said, well, why can't you understand her? And she said, she's speaking another language. Well, I reminded her that her unconscious mind can understand what's being said. She was speaking Polish. And she said they're asking her to create a formula to hurt people, and she doesn't want to do that. So I asked her what happened to the woman. 
they took her out and shot her. So the unconscious message that comes into her DNA was in order to feel alive, I'm, or in order to stay alive in this case, do not do well in mathematics. Wow. So we cleared that. It was five weeks before the end of the last year's semester. She texted me after her final. She got an A on her final. Wow. So that session for her was just, you know, maybe 45 minutes. And, you know, I say this, I've said this for many, many times for many years, results are all that matter. It's like when people, you know, contemplate and they want to logically justify, does this, you know, do any good? Does this work? It's like the proof's in the pudding. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And that's all that matters. And the why isn't as important as just the outcome. So that's very cool. Um, so what kinds of th what kinds of things do you see? Like, first of all, what kinds of things can you clear with people? I know, obviously, emotional stuff, mental programming, but you also told me that you can help with physical th uh, issues. Absolutely, physical issues, thyroid, um, diabetes. I mean, I'm not claiming to be able to cure that. That's not my intent at all. It's helping you figure out what's going on within your body and what's causing these physical reactions. So as a result of that, the man I studied with, uh, Dr. Morris Netherton, PhD psych, he has seen everything healed. Does that mean everything can be healed? Probably not. But in his practice, he has seen everything healed because the person came to them in the desire to completely heal whatever was going on, whether it was physical, emotional, or spiritual. Exactly. That's something I see a lot. I've worked with a lot of sick people over the years. And one of the things I see is very often, not very often, always, they manifest their illness, obviously, for emotional reasons. But also, a lot of times, they'll manifest a deadly illness to get out of what they think is some kind of no-win situation. Might be a relationship that they don't think there's any way they can get out of in a noble way, you know. It's like a lot of times people will die to have a noble way of getting out of a bad situation. Because, for example, if they're let's say in a in a relationship uh, let's say a long-term marriage and um and they don't want to have the stigma of divorce or whatever i've seen people actually you know want to manifest a deadly illness to get out of a relationship and and then everybody feels you know good about them it's like oh well oh that poor person you know she was noble and fought the cancer and ultimately though she lost oh how terrible but um so i see that a lot in in my work what kinds of things have you seen like that, and, and what have you been able to help people avoid or, or transition out of? Well, I'd like to backtrack just a moment about what you said, because I practice uh, as much as I can non-judgment, and I would be willing to guess that it might be a little bit more than what you assume is going on there because oh, yeah. of the karmic contracts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. I don't think there's a stamp for every single illness that it's only this way. I think it's very convoluted and we have to go in there and research what that is at the unconscious level. Right, right. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that all cases are like this. I'm just saying I've seen this on quite a few occasions where people would manifest. There's always everything is a karmic drama. Everything we manifest is a karmic drama. So, and, and for folks that don't know what the heck that means, what I'm talking about is basically that you come into this life and choose a certain path with certain probabilities and you wind up manifesting things based on that and based on your beliefs and a whole slew of things. But when we're engaged with other people, we wind up having, we act out these dramas to have a learning experience and to you know, have whatever kind of experience. And people will get in their mind sometimes that it needs to go down this path in order to um, resolve the way that they think they need to. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. It, it's, for example, like I've seen this on quite a few occasions where people think they have to manifest a disease in order to get a certain outcome where that's just one path it doesn't have to be that way so anyway sorry for interrupting but share with us what what uh what kinds of things you've seen people go through and how you've been able to maybe shift the path well i'm finding a direct correlation that suicide is a repetitive behavior pattern it has been done before whether you recognize that consciously it comes out in the session as an unconscious message so does that mean you had a past life where you killed yourself? Possibly, likely, or maybe some family member took their own life. So it's in your genetics. It's unconscious. I keep going back to this unconscious message because if it were conscious, we would be able to take care of it right here, right now. And while I would really love for everyone to be able to do this on their own, I'd, some people just need 
guidance. They need someone like me to help them discover this truth about themselves. Yeah, it's the old saying, you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know that you don't know it. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) So you do need outside help. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) Okay. So, So tell me some of the things that you, some of the kinds of issues you've seen resolved with people in doing this process? Well, let me go back to suicide for a moment. One of my clients discovered that she had actually killed herself eight times. And when we got to that session on the eighth time, she just burst out in tears. And she understood now why she felt like killing herself when she was only three years old. Wow. Wow. So it was layered up. Mm -hmm. And so what what was the Why did she come to you and what was the outcome? She actually came to me about a relationship issue. And one thing led to another because people come to me for a an issue and then we investigate and we come become more clear about who we really are and why these things are happening and what unconscious messages are being played that we either took on from our parents or from some other place. And um, what are some of the what are some of the th- th- kinds of things physical, emotional, mental? What kinds of things? What kinds of issues do people come to you with? And what kinds of things have you seen resolved? I've had veterans who come to me with PTSD and TBI. Uh, we've resolved severe migraine headaches. One of my clients was a veteran who had been out of the service for several years, and he had been suffering from migraine headaches for over six years. He had. 23 blasts and three documented concussions. And so he regressed to multiple lifetimes of being a soldier and having multiple lifetimes of concussion. And after two sessions, his migraines were gone. And we continued to five or six sessions and he was able to fully be functional again and went back to college, took his family, moved to another state and enrolled in the university. Mm. So it was a good, I don't know how long it will take but if you have a desire to heal yourself, then, you, then you're manifesting the resources like one of these. Hmm. You know, I, 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 many, many years ago, I, I realized through various kinds of techniques that I did that um, in my own life, there was a, let's say, a cellular memory in the blood of trauma from multiple generations, uh, particularly in the men's side of the family through war. Um, not just war, but but through war, and that this this memory of trauma is passed from generation to generation through the blood. And I know you've had some realizations about it. Can can you talk about that? Well, what I'm finding is, and as, and what my professor taught me is that. Well, I'll just give one example here. Alcoholism. He's found a classic case of alcoholism. Has maybe come from experiencing a death on the battlefield and during that period of time on the battlefield either slowly dying or dying quickly there was the use of alcohol either for numbing up or for surgery so as the spirit leaves the body the message is in order to feel alive i need alcohol that is an unconscious message being played out even though consciously you know it's ruining your career your relationships your health but you have to have alcohol Oh, I can see that. I've come from a long line of alcoholics, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not an alcoholic myself, but I, I've known quite a few alcoholics very up close, and that's exactly it. That They are the most alive, or at least they think they're the most alive when they're drunk. That's when they kind of emotionally come alive, and uh, so I totally get what you're saying. And so, so you see the same thing, though, through the bloodlines over multiple generations, this keeps recurring and recurring. How do we resolve that? Well, you do the resolution experience until you resolve it. The whole purpose is to have resolution. And have you worked, I mean, have you had success with alcoholics? Yes. But does that mean you can go drink alcohol? I don't think so. (laughs) It's not, what nutritional value does it have to our body? Well, that's like, you know, my family line has a long history of alcoholism. and, um, And I find, yeah, it's like, you know, when I was young, I mean, I was like what I, in college, what I call a volumetric drinker. <laughs> but I got over it. You know, it's like I I grew out of it, and I didn't have any desire to to be drunk. And now I enjoy life so much that you know, it's like I like being in three D. So I don't want to blur that with alcohol. Um, so so that's kind of you know how I've seen it. But I I can see how people, like you were saying, they get this locked into their emotional body. 
and then they just get addicted over and over and they just cycle and it just amazes me that people don't stop at some point and go hey you know this isn't working maybe i should do something else i don't think they know what else to do they're taking antidepressants and sleeping pills and they're totally numbed up but what i also am finding a lot of times is this numbing feeling or this fogginess or not being clear or not being able to make good decisions a lot of that can be cleared up in two or three sessions just working through your birth now understand that past life is anything before now five days ago five weeks ago five years ago 500 years ago 5,000 years ago so when you understand that maybe you can meet me where you're at and understanding that let's go investigate this first let's investigate it in your birth while you were in the womb because when you're in the womb you are being hypnotized mm -hmm. our parents give us messages unknowingly mm -hmm. so perhaps maybe our parents were smoking or drinking mm -hmm. during the time that we were in utero mm -hmm. that's continued out through our lifetime for some as fogginess unable to be clear numb which affects relationships all kinds of things mm -hmm. That reminds me of the work of Dr. Art Martin, who I worked with years ago. And he said that he realized in his work, he was a psychologist, uh, not the usual brand, of course, and he, he said that he realized after working with people and healing them and regressing them and doing things, that about 70% of people have rejection issues coming straight out of the womb because of most people are not conceived, their, their birth has not been planned. It's... It happens. It just happens. And then the mother and father are like, oh, crap, we're going to have a baby. What are we going to do at first? And that the child picks that up as soon as it's sentient in the womb, which is very early. And then it picks that up, and it, it feels rejection coming right out of, the, out of the womb. And so that has to be resolved as well. Well, I'd also like to comment on cesarean birth because in the last couple decades, there's been a lot more of cesarean births, either by personal request or because of an emergency, a true emergency. But what I am finding, I did work three years in suicide prevention, and that I'm finding a correlation with this cutting of coming out of the womb, being cut, is another one of those, in order to feel alive, I need to cut. Wow. And I'm not saying that's with everyone, but if you or you know someone who is cutting themselves, it may have been triggered through the cesarean birth. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes absolute sense. We can clear it. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. This can be cleared. Well, yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's the thing I've, you know, I've been teaching for many years also is that there's always a solution for everything. It's just finding it. And the moment you set your intention on finding it, you'll find it. Ultimately, you will find it. But most people don't even know there's a solution out there. Right. And that's the tragedy. Um, okay. So uh, anything you'd, else you'd like to expand on? What do you want me to expand? Well, um, I'm, I'd like to hear more of these war stories, of like things that people have been through that you've helped them resolve. That, to me, is always really interesting. Can you give us some more examples of some of the things you've seen people resolve? Well, I'm seeing a lot of people with relationship issues, and I'm finding them, well, it's they're all unique, and that's why it works. It's not a cookie cutter. These relationships that are not working are not working for a reason because there's an unconscious message being played out that's attracting this kind of person to you. And you know that you don't really want to be attracted to that kind of person, but you are attracting it. Mm -hmm. For example, one of my clients during session found out that her mother was raped while she was in utero. Wow. And this person was attracting partners who were very much like raping her mm. and it was a repetitive behavior pattern of this rape and then she was also raped at, you know at the university or other but I'm what I'm saying is it's frequency mm -hmm. so if we're, like attracts like what does that mean if we don't know that we have that frequency like you said they don't know then how then we have to start to look at why am I attracting this kind of relationship based on frequency and how can I change it And do you, if somebody wanted to get a session with you, do you come to them? Do they come to you? How does it work? Most of my clients, about 98% of my clients are over the phone or Skype. So you would just go to my website and send me a message that you're interested in scheduling an appointment. The first appointment is approximately two hours, and we work from there. Okay. Okay. And the website again? Newhumanresolution.com. Okay. You heard it, folks. Newhumanresolution.com. Susan Davis. Um, and um, 
check her out friend her on facebook uh susan any final words just make some changes decide and as we move through this this paradigm in a human body remember here's a few takeaways right now that most of us are not drinking enough water we are not taking in enough oxygen and we're losing magnesium so if you can remember that to drink more water to move your body to breathe and i will send you a free audio Remind me when you send me an email that you would like to have that free audio on, on stress reduction strategies. These things, Epsom salt soaks, putting the magnesium back into our body transdermally, all of those things will help to de-stress our body. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Susan, and uh, I really appreciate the information. Folks, get in touch with Susan. I know her. She's an amazing lady. She does amazing work. She's working on me, and boy, do I need it. <laughs> so anyway... Thanks very much, Susan, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Ken.